Yeah, so finally, text encoding initiative. Mm. So I already told you the text encoding initiative is the standard for XML. So the file ending remains XML. So it's still of the data type XML. It just follows a standard. And the fact that it does follow a standard would also be included in the so-called namespace. Mm. So it's a convention on how to use XML so that the resulting data will be interoperable between different projects. It was founded in 1987 and the consortium exists since 2000. The definition is as follows. The Text Encoding Initiative, TI, is a text-centric community of practice in the academic field of digital humanities, operating continuously since the 1980s. The community currently runs a mailing list, meetings, a conference series, and maintains the TI technical standard, a journal, a wiki, a GitHub repository, and a tool chain. So what we're interested in is this technical standard. And a minimal example of a TI file uh, is the following. The root element is always TI. Then there's a TI header. This contains author, title, dating, sources, and addition rules. So this ensures that the element is an academic resource that is citable and so on. And then text. There are also different options. You could also just have facsimile or, or other things. But this is a minimal example of what it looks like. I've linked a few resources as well. There is the Learn TI, the Teach Yourself, the P5 that you'll see maybe a few times is uh, the fifth version of the proposal and a few more links. The website is ti-c.org. And so here's an overview of this TI header. This is where we get back into describing sources, books. Mm, and there are four elements, as you can see, the ones that I've marked in red here. They're the four um, different big cat uh, categories. And the first is the file description. This is the only one that's obligatory, but the others will also be useful to us and we will be using them as well. The file description is a bibliographical description of the contents of the document. This means it's a description of the digital file. Many people mix this up. They think this is the source description, but it's not. And then there's the encoding description. It the, the, explains the connection of the electronic document to the source, such as, for example, the transcription rules. There's a profile description that describes all non-bibliographical aspects of the text. So, for example, the creation or the languages. And there's the revision desk that um, tracks changes in the digital document. So we can do things like versioning, for example. I've placed a link here to the so-called gentle intro to XML as well. Uh, there are links all over the slides that you can use as uh, extra resources. But um, to use TI, this is basically, this slide is a very brief introduction to the most important elements. That is div, it's a division, p, paragraph, head for heading, lb for line break, pb for page break or actually page beginning, Hi for highlight, L for line, LG for line group, that would be for verse, for example. List, item, list bibble, that's a list of bibliographical citations, and bibble for bibliographical information. These elements are very general. These pertain more to just modern texts, but these are the most important ways to describe elements of a text, I'd say. And the most important attributes are N, that's the label. I used to always confuse that with number. And it's easy to confuse, so just so you know, it actually means label. Type means typing. XML ID means a unique identifier. XML language means the language. You usually put an abbreviation. Rend is for rendering. And Anna for interpretation. There are many more, but these are, I think, the most important ones to know. And another important thing to know is that when we refer to an attribute, we usually say et n, so that we know that we're talking about an attribute. In the file itself, we're not using the at. This at is just to clarify that we're talking about an attribute. And you would obviously have that here as well. So this is a small example. This is not an XML format. This is just a few elements placed uh, one after the next. So for example, there's something like foreign, where I use XML language English for word, term, type, homonym, 
date, where I say when, 2009, time, name, type person, there's no name in there, a purse name, that's a personal name, the label is Caesar, that's a normalized form, and the XML ID is something I made up, um, and what's actually in the text is Kaiseris. So with the at n, in this case, I have a normalized name form, so I know whom I'm referring to, and this XML ID is also uniquely referring, in this case, to this person name, not to this person. I could also have something like ref for reference, where I would reference this um, ID without the hashtag. When I use the hashtag, it always has to be unique. I can always use that once, or it's not a unique identifier anymore. Mm. Yeah, here are just a few more uh, examples. If I want to do italic, I would say highlight with the rendition italic, and then that text would be italic. But obviously, this is just text. So the TI is just a textual description. If I want to render this as actually italicized, I will translate it, for example, to HTML, where it will be then displayed as italicized because I write a, a transformation rule that says to do so. But this will just remain like this. So this is like a semantic description. And here's a place name that I called Whitby and it, in the text it just says Abbey. Um, as I've already mentioned, there are namespaces in the TI. That's a little confusing in the beginning for lots of people. And they are identified via an URI. So this is something like this. I put the attribute XML namespace and um, this um, marker and then TI, and I put this URL to say this is what I'm referring to, because these things are meant to refer to standards. And once I do that, I can do um, check if it's valid in the Oxygen Editor. Then it will control for me if I wrote correct TI. So I could always preface my elements like this with TI P. That might be relevant in some cases if I have multiple standards in one document. Or, for example, HTML and TI both have the P element. If I want to be explicit about what I mean, I might want to use that. But in most cases, if I just declare my whole document is TI, I don't need to use this prefix. Here's an example of things that we won't be using, just so you've seen a few possible uses of the TI. It's a, it's a huge standard that offers options for all different sorts of text. In this case, this is acts of speech. I have a link behind the reference. If the speaker name is mentioned, that's SP, and then speaker, and then the text. I have an example of a letter. I would say division type letter with the label 14 in this case. It has a head, then an opener, a dateline that says Thursday evening, March 2nd. Mm. It has mixed languages, apparently. I don't know what happened here. The salute is hello. And then here's a paragraph and a closer with a salute and signed. An important thing to know is that there is a whole module about so-called named entities. That's names, dates, places, organizations, and so on. It's the TI-13. It's also linked here as a module. The most important ones for you to know or for you to know what it looks like is in this case purse name, that's for personal names, RS for reference, uh, referring string, that is when somebody is mentioned indirectly like he or the woman if you want to specify who it is. And you can put an add key or add ref to specify who it is. There's things like forename, surname, role name, generational name, additional name and name link. And here's just one example. I have a reference to the um, GND number and a person uh, that's Goethe in this case and a person that is Mina Harker Murray from Dracula that I've put in here as an example. You would have probably lists of these people in your TI header. And in the text, then you have the person name elements to mark whenever a person name comes up. Same goes for place names or whatever is in your data. But um, what we will be doing first, because uh, this is about describing books, this, uh, the examples that I just showed are just examples so you know what's out there. 
a few things, especially the names, dates and places uh, module will probably be relevant, but we will learn much more in depth about the things relevant for us from Sean and the um, MS description module. But just so you have some practice in how to fill out a TI header first in a very basic way, uh, this is what we're gonna do next and we're gonna encode one title page as a little exercise. So this is a TI header. Um, as you can see, there's a file description. This is the obligatory element, as I've mentioned, and a title. So that would be the title of the resource. I always use the example of Dracula. So if I'm encoding Dracula, this title does not say Dracula. It says, for example, digital edition of Dracula, because to make it clear that this is the title of the digital file. Then there's a publication statement that has information about the distribution of the source. So for example, in the GUMS examples, it would say that it's published by the GUMS and you could put in a lot of detail. There's a source description and this is where it gets interesting for us. This is where we describe our source, so the actual book that we're talking about. So, as I've already mentioned, the tit title and author in the title statement are not the bibliographic data from the source. This is you. So if you create this document, you could say you're the author or you're the editor, and you could declare the responsibility that you are the editor, for example. Mm, so make sure that you describe that correctly. This is also a point in the, in the Dublin Core, because the Dublin Core is also to describe digital files. So this is not the same thing as the bibliographic description, just so you can keep that in mind. If you want to describe your source elements, you would use something like the source description or um, the MS description that we're gonna learn about in detail. An example for a minimal source description would be this. It has a Bible element for a bibliographic citation with a title, The Interesting Story of the Children in the Wood. And the Bible is, um, so to say, a full text citation. So it's not necessarily structured data, it just is structured in the way that it says, marks up, this is the title. Then it says, author, and in the penny, histories, it says the publisher and the date. So that's obviously a modern bibliographical citation. Or the source description could be just a, a paragraph element that says born digital, no previous source exists. And you will also learn where you can find those examples later on, because that's going to be the most important thing, in my opinion, that you will work with to teach yourself how to use these elements. Mm, here's another example of a also pretty short uh, TI header. So these things get much, much longer, but to put it on a slide, I always had to make it really brief. This is an example of how this title statement is done correctly. In this case, I put a responsibility statement with the responsibility compiled by and then the name John Adams. So you could, for example, say um, encoded by and then your name. In the publication statement, for example, in this case, the distribu distrib distributor is mentioned, the Oxford Text Archive, and the source description has a bibble without further um, markup of the parts of the citation. There's a tiny, tiny example of a, an MS description. I think I'm not even going to go into detail because we are going to go into detail later. But just, just so you see what it could look like uh, as a minimal example. In this case, it has settlement, repository, a number, and an author, and so on. Mm. And to describe a title page, which is a task that we're going to do with the descriptions you created yesterday, is, um, yeah, we can use the title page element. So for example, these early modern print copper plates or title pages, we can, use, uh, we can describe using this. And this is what it looks like. It has the title page with the document title. I can identify title parts. As you know, that's very important with these very long titles. Mm, we can have a doc edition, byline, then there's a figure like a printer's mark, for example. I could uh, include it in there with a heading, uh, a paragraph, and a figure description that just says print is ornament, and a doc imprint that says printed London for TP in 1612. You might also need something like a front, for example, uh, for the front matters or the prefatory material. 
like there would be headers or abstract or um, title pages or prefaces, dedications and so on would be, could be in this front element before the main text body. And it could look something like this. It has a front with an epigraph and a quote and a dedication. So the important part now is, and my philosophy is always that I don't teach you all these elements because that's <coughs> how I learned it. And I based my judgment on the slides that I had, but that's not just such a good approach because the TI gets updated. So I think it's better if you reference the guidelines because they are the current ones and they also sometimes get improved. And also these slides can never cover all aspects. And for me, for example, in one project, I was working with slides that I had from a class that I took a few years early, earlier, and they were uh, simplified. So I, I guess they were a little misleading or I misunderstood them because I didn't remember it so well. And then I misencoded something and I don't want you to do that. So I think the best way to, do, to, to encode your TI is to always look up information on the TI elements as you're doing it. And as you're coming up with your model, essentially, you always look up how are these elements defined. So there are the general TI guidelines that also contain an XML primer or um, the learn the TI page. What I usually do is web search TI plus the element that you want, like TI, TI header, and you will usually get to different types of pages. That is a definitions page. There's a list of all examples for that element. Um, you can find it directly over web search or click on show all in the examples of the definitions page. I'm just going to show you quickly after this. And sometimes there's even a module overview text for things as big as the TI header because this has its own module and there's a long explanatory text and you can usually find everything that you need. And then there's a list of the modules that might be relevant for us. I also placed links on the slides. Uh, TI all is all modules. Then five would be characters, glyphs and writing modes. 10 is manuscript description. 11 is representation of primary sources, 12 critical apparatus, and 13 names, dates, people, and places. And also another information, TI guidelines are documentation and reference. They're not necessarily teaching materials. So if you want to teach yourself these things and not just look something up, you might want to try other tutorials like there's a TI by example page and tutorials on primary sources or critical editing. And there's a few tricks for oxygen as well. So if the TI schema is linked to your document and you have internet, you can always hover over an element and you will get, you will get the links to be redirected to the relevant page. And it will also give you the mini definition. That's a good thing to, if you're not sure how to use it, look at this definition, make sure you understand it so you don't misuse elements. Mm, and if you just open a tag by typing the opening um, pointy brace, then the editor will suggest, suggest a list of elements that is allowed in the place where you're standing. For example, in the TI header, order is very important or the sequence is strictly defined, so you're only allowed to place certain elements after certain others. Yeah, so the practice session is the following. Um, how can your bibliographical description be integrated into a TI header? I think there's not enough time to actually do all that because that's going to take a lot of work and thinking. This is maybe more something for you to do um, afterwards or if we still have time. Um, I would like to ask you to web search TI, TI header and learn how to use new elements and look at these different information pages. I'm going to also show you now, so that's done. You could read about the TI header module or try this TI by example, the TI header. You will learn about the manuscript description later. And you could, for example, um, something that you could do now is encode your title page. As you've seen in the minimal example, for a not so complicated title page, that's doable. And I think we should maybe do that now. Mm. And I'm going to just click those links here so you can see what, no, not like that. I'm going to click all those links to see what reference pages I'm talking about, oh wait, oh, stop. So this is, I'm going to make this much bigger. This is uh, the TI header info page. This is the reference. Here is this um, short definition that I told you about. 
and if you hover over elements in the oxygen editor, this will come up and the link to lead you here. It tells you which module it belongs to, the TI header in this case, and here are links to relevant um, modules. So this is where you can have a text to read about it. There's things like what attributes are allowed, what's it contained by. In this case, because the TI header is so high up in the hierarchy, it's only allowed to be in TI or TI corpus. And it may contain the following sub uh, elements as children elements. There's one short example, maybe I'm gonna, not that short. And when you click here on this example, show all, that will give you the list of examples. In the case of the TI header, that's very many. But the good thing is you can scroll through and look for something that's similar to what you're trying to do and get inspired. And that's, a, I think, a good and easy way to learn how to use these elements. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and also how I web search. I think initially, is, or for example, if you research something like TIP, that might not come up. But usually the more specific it is, like TI header, that should come up in the search right away. Here I get all of that. Although my, um, my search engines usually know that this is what I'm looking for, so initially it might take a while for your search engine to know that you're always trying to search this. In this case, I'm gonna go for a title page. And here's the reference for that. I also have the minimal example on the slides, which I will upload right away. But yeah, I think this is the exact same example that I had on the slide. And if you go show all, you can look at how other people did this. So I'd ask you now to try and encode your title page. If there's any question, obviously ask. Maybe it could also go to this. Which one do you want me to put up? I think you can upload the slides. Yep. Yeah. I will upload the slides right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Got it? Oh yeah, because you had the same description. Yeah, feel free to share your descriptions. <laughs> or for example, I don't know, maybe I can, if you wanna get started, you can open a new TI document in Oxygen. TI all. And when you open a new document, this is what it looks like. All right, Sarah's slides are in the Dropbox now, too. Mm -hmm. So this is what came out when I just said new file. I type TI and then pick TI all. And it creates a new document like this. Because if you had to type it all by hand, it's confusing initially. So this gives you a TI header. Right. And so, if I want to know where to place it, no, because now I, if I open my, my new TI document, then I want to know where does title page go, right? So if I, I want to look up that, this is where these contained by and may contain things are relevant. May contain will give you an idea of what you can put into the title page. And contained by shows, for example, it can be part of front that I mentioned as front matter. And so if now I need to know where, where wait, I can make it bigger so you, hopefully you can see it. So here, it's contained by, 
in the manuscript description, but we're not doing that right now, so let's not do that. So we're picking text structure front for the front matter. Now I'm just clicking my way through to the next thing, front, and checking where does that go. And in this case, it says contained by text. And if you remember from our document, this has text. So before text body, I can open, wait, I'm gonna make it bigger. So I found out front is contained by text. So I go here, and this is what I meant with the oxygen tricks. I open it like this, and it will offer everything that's allowed. In this case, lots of things are allowed, but I'm just gonna say front. And then it opens front. I could also put back after the body. Te body would stand for the main text body. And then in front, I am allowed to open a title page. Oops. Title page. Oh. Yep, yeah, now, now you could also do the other TI trick of always just opening the pointy brace and it will allow what is, uh, show what's allowed. Although in this case, lots of things are allowed, so maybe you wanna take inspiration from the examples. But in some elements, if it's very specific, not so much is allowed, so this might suffice like this. And also, this also shows, in this case, it's not happy because there's no content. But if I go to front, this is where the definition comes up. If I hover over it, it says, Front matter contains prefatory matter, headers, abstracts, and so on. And then if you click on TI guidelines, it will automatically open up that definition of front. So, where are we? Yeah, and this is how you would, how you can fill it in. <laughs> how do I get back out of here? If you need any help, let me know. Christian's looking like. No, mm. it's like science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of things in science fiction became real, so I guess it's, it's true. Just let me know how I can help. I need help. I want mm -hmm. to come uh, uh, because it's still not working. Oxy Garage, I wanted to convert my uh, previous document that I was working here in mm -hmm. when I was, so I put a... Can you maybe go to, click to TI Garage, it says it's deprecated. Uh, click here. Mm -hmm. Maybe try the same thing. Uh, uh -huh. Is it a TI document? For, but yes, yeah, but, then but go for you it was uh -huh. working, so I was thinking... Yep, and then um, maybe go to advanced here. I and had not, I, without. Yeah, yeah. Convert text only and then choose file. And you take the file. Mm -hmm. And then get, go convert. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like it, maybe. Aha. Uh -huh. Can you open the file in the oxygen? Ah, but that was like an old file. I just picked it. I have a Zotel new. Maybe I can Maybe you can try that one. Is it uh -huh. click first here to save, check if it's valid? No, because, because if it's uh, not, it's... Um, it's not valid because of the connection with schema. Something is going on with schema. Okay, can we... Wait a second. Can I just but, uh, copy uh, the it is, uh, with, uh, It's a problem with schema. Well, I know already that uh, I have problem yeah, with schema. I, yeah, but I'm, I'm just making a new copy of this and deleting the schema for now so you can yes, work with it. Yes, without schema. And we can save it as something else. Uh, I think we just get rid of this. This line, I hope that's what it is. Let's try again. Can I say it? Without schema, yes. 
Ah, you see no, it's successful. Yeah, okay. Let me it try is correct, again. but only the I know that schema is not working because I have. I need to ask Erlinda. No, no, it's uh, oh, Zratza or Zratza. Yeah, okay, you go. <laughs> Where is this uh, without? Uh, um. Where have you saved this one? I'm not sure. Maybe you could go to save again so we can look <laughs> where it went. <laughs> if you uh, say, if you just click save as, maybe. Uh, where have you saved it? Ah, uh, uh, here. Uh huh. Without schema, I will copy just to download, mm -hmm. just to have it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it is uh, uh -huh, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. Okay, now it should work, I think. Ah, uh, let's now go. Uh, to because I really know that it's about schema. <laughs> it's working, I think. Yep, and there it is. Uh, now I can click on it. Ah, uh, cool, cool. cool. Yes, yes, it's. Uh, and you can click any of the chapters to jump there. It doesn't do much, but yeah, no, yeah. it's there. Ah, I can even see that I have some uh, errors here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for example, that's something that is helpful yeah. for. Why is this empty? Oh, cool. so. <laughs> It's it's a useful tool. Yes, 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 it's yes, not yes. for a final product, but it's useful. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, see the that because I didn't know why it isn't working. So it's working now. So are we going to have a break now? Yeah, now for two hours. So we can finish. We can work on the MS you can, description uh, after. Yeah. Okay. You finish as much as you want now, or ask questions whenever. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, just for everybody, um, uh, we have uh, officially have a break now, so you can finish as long as you want. But we're also going to do MS description in detail, so if you don't want to go into a lot of detail, we can do that later. I will be around for all the breaks, so we can always ask and plan your break as you want.